Stylist here. We're at the Great British Eyewear Show in Manchester, and today I'm talking to Stefano uh, from Feb 31st, an amazing eyewear company that manufactures frames out of wood, ethically sourced by the FSC in Italy. Hi, Stefano. How are you today? Nice to meet you. Good. Very good. Great. Nice Thank to meet you. you. Thank you. Um, so tell me, so why did you set up your company, Feb 31st? Um, okay, there is not a particular reason why we set up. It's like when you meet the lady of your life. Yeah. It just happened. So uh, I have a partner. Yeah. Um, uh, he got the idea of uh, uh, making uh, wooden eyewear. I, I, w I come from an entrepreneur family uh, mm. working with, with wood. Mm -hmm. So we considered the idea. We, it took two years of R&D to develop something that had a uh, sense. Yeah. And then at that point we set up the company. So it was basically two different people meeting kind of by chance yeah. uh, sharing the ideas and say you know i can do this i have this idea let's let's do it let's try to do it together yeah so you just literally you were just there with your friend you had this idea let's create a range of yeah wood yeah and i say i got this idea about wood and eyewear yeah and i say well it may work we have some probably some bottlenecks some rigidities yeah uh, we've been working on that uh, yeah uh, as i said a uh, couple of years of r d yeah. so test and you know yeah and then when we were happy about the product we started wow. officially the company in and 2011 you, 2011 so we're going 11 years now oh um, yeah we are, uh, we are we are we are finished the primary school starting the you know oh, university now. <laughs> <laughs> starting a job. yeah <laughs> so you started so tell me where is your factory base now bergamo, bergamo. Uh, it's uh in the middle of the alps yeah uh, on the mountain we have uh all uh, local people working for us all ladies yeah. all ladies production is 100 percent ladies yeah oh wow yeah so yeah. you don't do any production then no well no. <laughs> well at the beginning i did yeah all right yeah, <laughs> you need cool. to do every, everything you know at the beginning yeah. but yeah so we yeah. have uh yeah we have local ladies uh yeah. we are in a little town little village in the middle uh, in the middle of the mountains bergamo is about one hour north of milan Right, wow, so one north hour north of Milan, yep. Bergamo, and that's where you founded the company initially? Or yes, that's where your factory uh, absolutely, is now? yeah, where we found it, where we are from, mm. it's all, uh, you know, it's all there. So it's all kept very local, yeah. that's amazing. So tell me, so um, with, your, with your frames, obviously they're made out of wood, is yeah. that one of the main things you'd say that makes your glasses different to other ranges of eyewear? Is that what, what, what would you say separates your eyewear range from other eyewear ranges? Right. What makes you different? When I try to talk about my babies to a customer, I mm. always tell them, uh, you can either choose a frame or a fab. Mm -hmm. We want to be different. Uh, it's not only about wood, it's about uh, giving the possibility to the customer to totally color, customize the frame. Mm -hmm. uh, so at the end, you're going to get something unique to you. So your money, are uh, well, that, that's, that thing has a value because yes. uh, you are building up something belonging to you color as you want with some details uh, that make it unique and that's the main point of fab right uh, you know so making bespoke bespoke eyewear and make it individual to them exactly. so rather than you just having picking up a frame and someone else can pick up that frame exactly the fact with the feb 31st is i'm if i'm right you can literally customize every aspect of the frame yes, exactly whether it's different colored top bottom yep. different colors of the sides through there yep and then so once you have a frame it's an individual it's yours. frame it's yours it's and totally yours and there's nothing like that uh, everyone else no and wood help us to to make this possible easily because really? that would be complicated with uh, metal with uh, acetate uh, because our frame is made out of 13 layers of wood glued together we can play with the colors with them uh, and and so wood helps us help us to to be able to offer this uh, situation so yeah you can either uh, buy a, a frame or uh, you can choose a fab Feb. <laughs> and Feb 31st, tell me, where does the name Feb 31st come from? Well, because where 
you know, it's our frames are light, are uh, are uh, natural, you know. <laughs> it, it, uh, yeah. Um, when when uh, you wear them, you get into a different dimension. Yes. So we had uh, we were forced to add one day to the calendar. Yeah. Right. It's uh, <laughs> it's a different dimension. Yeah. You're forced to add an extra day onto the calendar, or yeah. three days, I suppose. Feb well, <laughs> well, Feb 31st sounds good. Yeah. Feb 29th. You know, ah. that, that's <laughs> once every four years. Yeah. <laughs> but 30th, it's a little bit harsh for Italians. So. Yes. <laughs> that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. So tell me, so a few um, questions that I have is like, so when you say them frames are made of wood, um, do you know what type of wood they're made from and why they're made from that type of wood and not other types of wood? Right. They're made out of uh, uh, the, the poplar family. Poplar family. So white. Yes. Easy to be dyed, to be colored. It's white, so it's easy to be dyed. Yeah. Uh, uh, fast grow, Grows so fast, yeah. you can get it out of. Uh, 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 well, we, we don't cut forest. We no. cut. Uh, I don't know the English word for that, but it's uh, it's well managed uh, uh, logs, trees. So you cut them, right. they fast grow, and you cut them again. So it's uh, it's all certified wood that it is not coming. That is coming from uh, well uh, um, uh, managed. So it's sustainably sourced, exactly. basically, is absolutely. what we're saying. So Ab they're kind of like, they'll absolutely. make sure they don't overproduce, they're not cutting it down too much, that's going to affect the world. Yeah. Um, and I think, is there, there's an accreditation for that, yeah. isn't there? Is it Called the FSC, 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 Forest Stewardship Council, right. which is a worldwide organization that uh, uh, guarantees that all the wood used is well managed. So it's right. cut and you give time of the tree to grow, grow up again. So yeah. it's... Uh, so it's coming from plantation range. more yeah. than uh, forest and trees, you know. So yeah, yeah it's uh, that's important. You know, it's all about sustainability. Wood yeah. is a uh, is a richness, is a raw material. We cannot just cut it and that's it. It's uh, it's something we need to absolutely manage it. I was going to say because people are becoming very conscious now about them um, being sustainable, thinking about the world, and you could easily think wood, oh we're chopping down trees, you know, no. that's not what we want to no, do. No, that's not um, what we are so doing. So that's, that's very important to get across to people, isn't it? Because absolutely. that's something people could think. Whereas these essentially, we use a particular type of wood from the popular family. Yeah. One, so we can color it easily. Yep. And um, but two, also because it grows quite quickly yep. and gives us the chance to sustainably farm that wood. Exactly. Rather yeah. than using a different type exactly. of wood where we might just it might not be as sustainable. Basically. Yeah. And we are constantly looking for uh, alternatives. Now we are using uh, fossil wood, so wood that uh, fell already, that are already yes. in the ground. Right. Um, we are using uh, wood from uh, the Italian mountains that fell through uh, due to a big storm in 2018. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, that's uh, spruce. Right. Uh, so, uh, yeah, where we can, we want to add uh, uh, sustainable raw materials to our offer because that's, yeah. that's a, a kind of obsession, you know. Yeah. We are obsessed by that. Yeah. That's so good to yeah. like, really be, have that conscious like thing about being sustainable. Yeah. And um, you're telling me about this storm, which is amazing. So there was a storm in Italy that actually blew over, if I'm right, 14 million trees. Yeah, um, in, one evening, down. in one evening. Yeah. In one evening, 14 million trees like, yeah. fell down through this storm called Storm Via, I yep. believe. That's a normal storm. storm yeah. and, and what is it that you've managed to utilize from that fallen wood? So I believe, is there something you do slightly differently with that wood than yeah. you do with the popular wood? Ab absolutely, yeah, because uh, uh, that's spruce, Christmas trees. Yes. Which is uh, very white, very pale. It, it, it has a color that doesn't fit. Uh, it's, it's not uh, easy to be well uh, on, on a face. Right. It's too okay. light. Too light. So we thought about, uh, you know, uh, uh, staining it and uh, finishing it with a dark patina, with a, a black patina, uh, uh, finished by hand to give to give uh, the, the the frames a kind of uh, vintage effect. Right. So yeah. we are using a white, uh, pale, uh, not exactly uh, the easy color of the wood yeah and we have transform transformed it into something uh, wearable and and uh, and nice i think so yeah it's cool that makes and sense then so i'm sure i've seen that word and then basically generally the feb 31st woods they are a uh, light color so you can then obviously uh, the popular ones you say so you can apply that color to it but because this range from a lot of the wood is one of those christmas trees like ones yes. which is darker 
you wouldn't be able to get some of the same colours you would with the popular one. So you've had to temper that with some kind of those different colours. So you exactly. still get something different and unique rather than it just being that. Do you do any without the colour aspect of it, where you just have the colour of that grain of wood? Or yeah, we do have some 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 uh, mm. real uh, well uh, real timbers colour. Yeah. So not popular dyed or uh, tinted but uh, real uh, real wood colors we do have some yeah yeah uh, that's that's part of the offer but uh, yeah uh, what's fancy with fab is colors yes we are colorful uh, so we play with yeah. colors so that's that's I'm quite one colorful of the as well. I yeah. quite like my colors so <laughs> well i'm black right now but yeah, i do have but some colors on the side on of your frame <laughs> is perfectly with the side of my yeah back. exactly yeah, yeah. It's perfect. and yeah. the blue on the front as well yeah. so we're a great team <laughs> Um, I've even got the pink in my socks here today. Now my well. socks are black. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I've got a few more questions for you. So thank you so much again for your time today. My pleasure. Um, but what I'd like to ask is, um, so one of the things um, I think that makes some frames different to other frames is some frames can be mass produced in a factory and other ones can be a little bit more handmade. And when some people say handmade, People can be curious, well, is that just they just put a screw in it together? Or is it, do they take the time to chop out the wood? Which portions of a Feb 31st frame are, I suppose, factory made versus which portion of it is handmade and using hand skills from a human instead of a machine? Right. It's 50-50. 50-50, okay. So, uh, we put together these 13 layers. We create a block that is heated and shaped. Uh, and then we put that block under a CNC machine, five axis, that's high tech, mm -hmm. uh, that is simply routing the frame. Yes. And that's the end of the technology. Right. And we get into the manual labor then. So all mm -hmm. the sanding, uh, <laughs> mounting the hinges, mm -hmm. um, the finishing, the assembly, it's done by hand. So it's 50-50, right. I would say. Yeah, so you do the main cutting, which yes. comes from the machine. Yeah. And then all of the kind of the hand finishes, like softening those edges, popping the um, inserting the hinges, in, inserting the hinges yeah. that um, sort of stuff would be done by, by hand. By absolutely. Hand. Yep. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And you also, I believe, um, one of the interesting things I think you've done is um, you've obviously got this um, wood. A lot of frames are made from wood. You've got their hinges. But you've also added this um, polarized clip onto some of your frames, I believe. So someone can have an optical frame and then it magnetizes, yes, is that right? Yeah, we put magnets. Yeah, we are, we are yeah. inserting magnets on the frame. So uh, you, you can have, a, yeah, you can have a, uh, a frame, you can have a sunglasses, so a magnet clip yeah. that can also be customized. And that's unique right. in the industry. I think it's really unique. Really, yeah, yeah, it's amazing. So you can have one frame all in one color yeah. and then get just a different block of wood in a different color and get that magnetized picture frame. I believe you do also do some frames which use metal components yeah. as well and yeah. um, with a crossover with the wood. Can you tell me what metal you use and why you use that metal as well, please? Okay. Um, uh, at one point, we decided that uh, we didn't want to focus only on wood, mm -hmm. okay. but we wanted to focus, because that's our uh, soul, on bespoking, customizing. So right. we've been playing with different materials like uh, titanium, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, one of the metals we are using for, uh, yes. for, a, for a collection, and steel. Right. Uh, but uh, even those materials can be colored, because yes. that's always the point. Regardless yes. the material, a fab frame can be color customizedly and bespoke color. So that's mm -hmm. the point. So you want to make sure that you're using metals where you can um, apply a color to. We have a color palette, kind of, and you can have a color palette, palette so you can spray the metal options. the color you want. Yes. Exactly as uh, well, similar to, to the to the wood. So that's yes. that's something nobody does because no. it's uh, you know. We do, we do treat every fab as one single uh, baby, you know? Yeah. You know, we, so we don't do mass production and... His you know. frames are his babies. Yeah. His they, frames are his babies. They are my babies, yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. And so tell me also, um, so we've, obviously we know wood, if I, and we're, we're using this poplar wood, so it's sustainable. Are there any challenges when you're introducing the metal element of things to keep 
keep the range sustainable in a sense? Are there any challenges around that? Or is it quite um, easy to source these titaniums and stainless steels in such a way? Because I suppose is the metal recyclable or something? Well, or? I think the only decision we took there uh, right now is uh, to source this stuff uh, from where we are, Italy. Zero, yes. we, we say zero kilometers. So we right. are not going to find some fancy, you know, exotic suppliers no. where we don't know what they use, uh, no. you know, what kind of finish they use. So yeah. it's all it's all made in Italy. So your, so your titanium and your stainless steel both come from within Italy? Yeah, yeah. The supplier is from Italy. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. So I always find a lot of suppliers will kind of source frames from abroad. A lot of people get their titanium from Japan, for example. Right. Uh, uh, yeah. Stainless steel, I don't know, maybe Germany or something. Well, we, we do have a lot of stainless steel in Italy, but yeah. yeah. It, it's a decision that no, normally, yeah, you go to China, you go to some places yeah. to, to see something, to find something uh, less expensive. Mm. Uh, that's that's our decision. I must say, Daniel, that 85% uh, of our production is wood. Yes. So that's our core business, core business. Uh, uh, and, uh, and and that's where uh, you know uh, it's our bread and butter mm. business. Mm. Um, uh, metal is, is just it, yeah. I think, I think that's yeah. what's interesting about Feb 31st. From my experience with Feb 31st over the years, you've always had this thing for colour, and that's always quite true to you, isn't it? Rather than just kind of going so neutral. The customization is what's really interesting to you, but you're constantly innovating. You started off with, I believe, was it eight cut layers of wood uh, that you had to construct one frame? Yeah. Um, and then I've just seen today, and this is the benefit of coming to the Great British Eyewear Show, seeing the latest eyewear, is that you've just come up with a range of 17 layers yeah, of wood. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and tell me just quickly, why have you chosen to go with 17 layers of wood um, instead of just the eight layers that you had before? Uh, well, you need to have the shape here to explain, but it's basically because we wanted to add some uh, radius to the shape uh, to highlight some colors possibilities. So right. it's uh, uh, technical and uh, uh, aesthetical. So yes. when you're going to, uh, you will be shooting the frames, you will understand. Uh, but right now, big chunky frames are required. Yes. So we are, uh, you know, we need to be aware of what what the market wants so this is on a style basis yes some people you're saying right now in the eyewear industry and people on the high street they're starting to look some chunkier shapes yeah. and styles you're finding that. including ladies yeah including they ladies. want they want you know yeah chunky frames are really in you've heard it from stefano here yeah um, and then so we're going chunkier on a style basis also i believe just from my experience as an optician um that also the chunkier frames we can get some better finishes for some people with higher prescription lenses is that right is that Ab absolutely yeah absolutely yeah yeah it's that's a, uh, it's a common problem um, for a lot of people when they have higher prescriptions that the lenses can be a lot chunkier and thicker towards the edges of the frame um, so when we have the ability as opticians to use frames which have a thicker edge to it it can disguise some of the edge thickness of those lenses so cosmetically can look a lot better to that person and that's why it's really great for me to work with people like Stefano who keep thinking about these things so we can end up with great finishes for eyewear like you um, so yeah so I think that's been absolutely brilliant uh, my pleasure you so much for your time my pleasure Daniel. we'll do some more videos soon looking at some of the rest of the stuff thank you thank you very thanks much thanks a lot thank you thank you <laughs>